Hello and welcome to the Sands of Time Review Channel. Today we're here with an episode of uh, Watch Express. So we're here to discuss some of the new releases and this time another new release from Seiko itself. Um, as you can see here, we're looking at the Black Series Limited Edition today. And essentially it's their concept of a night diver. Um, uh, really it's just a, you know, your PVD Black version of the existing uh, watches from the Seiko lineup in the Prospects collection. So we're looking at the 62 MAS, we're looking at the Captain Willard, we're looking at the Marine Master 200, and we also have the higher end Captain Willard with the ATEL movement, the SLA 061J1. Now, I got to commemorate this uh, release because I think it's done extremely well, and, it, and I think to date this is probably the one of the best uh, blacked out, or well not really blacked out, or just the PVD black versions of some of the Prospects watches uh, that we have out there. Um, and I think blacked out watches, or just PVD black watches, do extremely well. Uh, especially, you know, with the, the Darth Turtle, the Ninja Turtle from Seiko Prospects. Um, they are very, very collectible watches uh, at this point of time. Um, I also once used to own the Seiko Prospect Sumo in the limited edition PVD Black, and it had a similar colorway to, to this. Um, so what we have here is the SPB253J, which is based on the 62MAS, uh, SPB255J, which is based on the Marine Master 200, and the SPB257J, which is based on the Captain Willard. And I'll go through the SLA061 later. So what we have here is we have a little bit of uh, whitish or creamy creamy loom on this style. So it's a little bit vintagey, just just based on uh, stock images alone. Um, and we do know there is a very pronounced orange uh, minute hand uh, alongside uh, orange marker uh, on the uh, timing bezel from 0 to 15. Now this is not the case on the Captain Willard uh, and the uh, MM200 variant where you have orange from 0 to 200, I mean 220. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we, we do get this, and uh, unfortunately, and I don't really think this is a huge issue, but it would have been great if they actually color matched the date wheel. So have black background, white text would have been excellent choice here, but I think just the way um, the rest of the components are, it, it's all right, at least on the 62 MAS. Um, it's all right in all, all variants actually to have you know it, it's to not have that color match date wheel um so uh take it out how it is i think it's still going to look amazing in person uh, and that here is the luma bright um beautiful i mean you have a yellowish orange uh loom um you got a green loom pip and then you have um blue loom for the indices uh, and I think, you know, obviously Luma Bright, I can't commend it enough. It's it's just too good for what it is. Um, and the best thing about these variants is that they feature this kimono style NATO strap, which in my opinion is just um, of excellent quality, very st uh, sturdy. Uh, and it feels, you know, feels, feels like really high quality uh, strap. I think getting any of these watches alone or any Seiko watch that comes with these straps is actually something to truly appreciate because it's done it's done extremely well and obviously matching pvd colored uh um keepers um uh, for for your straps as well they've they've not they've not skimped out on anything everything here makes sense everything here is a perfect package and you know it's a it's their fabric strap it incorporates traditional braiding technique from japan called the saichu so one thing really cool about this is that you know it can deal with exposure to sunlight and it's very resistant uh to degradation yeah degradation caused by sunlight and it's it, it's strong i felt this in person i really want to get one of their straps and in each package you will get one fabric strap in this kind of dark brownish color and then you'll also get a black rubber strap which is it's cool to know that you're going to get something like that um there's not much here to say. I mean, these are based on existing watches. Um, if there's one complaint I always have with Seiko, it's pretty much that the the mechanical movements inside, especially the 6R35, can be a hit or miss. 
um, you know, you're kind of playing your hand of poker there, and its accuracy tolerance is plus 25 to minus 15 seconds per day. So you can be very unlucky and get uh, a watch that's on the boundaries of this accuracy, and because it's within the specification tolerance from Seiko, Seiko aren't going to actually do anything about it. I mean, you can go to a watchmaker and just get it regulated, or you could do it yourself if you've got the skill. But again, this is, you shouldn't really be doing this when you're purchasing a watch at this price, a luxury watch, really. Uh, 1,895 Australian dollars retail on this, and also the Marine Master 200. Uh, the Captain Willards are generally $100 more expensive. So this should read ideally 1995 Australian dollars, which it does. And these are all limited to 5,500 pieces each. Now, 5,500 pieces for a Seiko is quite limited, um, especially of these caliber uh, of this model. Um, you know, the, these are kind of sought after. People actually really appreciate these, and I think these watches are quite the looker. I, I think these will do extremely well. But at the end of the day, you are getting 5,500 times three of these. So, you know, let's say you do miss out on a 62MAS, you can look into the Marine Master 200 or the Willards. My personal favourite here, I'd have to give it to the 62MAS and the Captain Willard, mainly because I really appreciate the 6159 case uh, to be in stainless steel and to be able to see that mirror finishing Zaratsu polish that you would get on the MM200 and the MM300. I don't, I kind of dislike it when the black kind of dulled it down. Now, one more thing to note is that with these watches, Seiko have stated that this is stainless steel with hard coating. Now, I don't know if that means die shield coating or die shield coating. I do think the hard coating is, is meant to help the scratch resistance of the watch. Um, so, especially with the PVD treatment. So, I'm kind of excited um, for what you get. Um, and the good thing is, or something I do want to know is, are these individually numbered? And yes, they are. That's good. So you have individually numbered limited editions. I think these are going to do extremely well uh, for, for what they are. You know, there's really not much I can uh, talk about. Um, I mean, another negative, which is really, to me, it's also, an, it's not a, not a huge negative, but the bezel um, alignment. Your bezel can be slightly misaligned. This happens at Seiko at Seiko prices at even 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 or 10,000 Australian dollars as well. Um, but because naturally Seiko feel on the bezel, there is a slight bit of back play. You can technically align the watch. So if personally, it hasn't bothered me, but I can see why it will, because at the price point, they really should be able to perfect that. Um, apart from that, I think these watches are phenomenal. They're, they're great lookers, um, you know, you have a little bit of flamboyance with the orange flare compared to the SLA version here where you only have a little bit of that orange flare there, to, orange flare to it. So we'll have a look at the SLA version. Uh, so this is, of course, a Captain Willard. Uh, the difference between this and the 6R35 version in my personal experience is that this is much bigger. This is also much longer. Um, so that, that's one thing to notice in the case design. And this features the 8L35 movement, which is a hand assembled movement in this Grand Seiko studio of Shizuku Ishii in Japan. Now the dial, what we have here is, this is a textured dial um, and essentially it's meant to express the sand on the seabeds. Uh, you also have this nice uh, uh, orange pop on the second sand and I, I really appreciate the handset on this version because especially the second sand, you have, a, you have this very pronounced counterbalance which is something I actually appreciate. And of course we have that, you know, uh, vintage -y looking loom over here. Um, obviously with this full PVD, same thing. Uh, Anti-reflective coating on the crystal. I um, believe you've got the ceramic bezel. Uh, I'll double check on that. Uh, and I just like the text in orange and the second hand uh, in orange as well. It's just uh, beautiful. And you have the date between four and five, which kind of just blends into the dial. And it does have a matching uh, date background, which is uh, something you don't see in the uh, the 6R35 versions. So obviously here you get the bracelet and you also get a silicon strap. It would have been great if Seiko were to offer a, a fabric, 
honestly the fabrics a phenomenal strap um and obviously yep atl35 movement um which look the atl35 movement even though it's being a grand seiko hand assembled caliber that's going to last the test of time as well um you know the oils are hand applied but again the accuracy tolerance or specification here is plus 15 to minus 10 seconds per day i do think it is kind of disappointing especially when you're paying 5195 australian dollars for um usually your performance is significantly better i from my own experience i can definitely say that but i can definitely not say someone out there is going to be unlucky and going to be on the boundaries of these accuracy tolerances and you know you your smile suddenly turns into a frown uh, i definitely don't want anyone to experience that um, and that's from my view my view now this is a limited edition of a thousand pieces rightfully so this is a five thousand dollar watch um in australia at least i know seiko itself are restricting supply of their high-end limited edition pieces uh, specifically to boutiques and very select authorized dealers i'm talking about one or two in the country there are many authorized dealers in australia uh, and you know with the number of pieces they're actually lowering down the number of pieces of these sla versions and they're going into select places mainly boutiques who sell them at full retail price um, so not sure how this one will do whether it goes to an authorized dealer but at times authorized dealers especially with seiko especially with us as watch enthusiasts we expect a good discount um on these seikos i you know i had recently picked up an sla 043 for 35 percent off in my opinion excellent it was worth it i loved it but as you can see authorized dealers are selling it at huge discount because they can't get rid of the stock so there were simply too many so i think seiko are kind of learning from that mistake bad for us good for them um but it's going into the hands of like proper enthusiasts which is a good thing so that's kind of my take on the new sla061 and the new seiko prospects the black series limited edition i think these are stunning releases especially with the straps you get um the pack the total package it's just it they just look great so that's from myself it's the sands of time exiting